The alternating series test is a test that's used <clears throat> when you have a series that alternates with positive and negative terms. Usually they're identified by having this expression in here, negative 1 to the n. Uh, the reason that makes the signs differ is when n is an odd number, like the first term, you get negative 1 to the first, which stays negative 1. But any time n is even, like 2, 4, 6, or 8, negative 1 to an even number turns out to be positive. So whenever you see a series that flip-flops sign, it's a, a good chance that you could use the alternating series test to determine its convergence. Now this is one of the one of the um, few tests that actually handles negative terms in a series. If you look back through some of the other uh, tests that we've already covered, the integral test demanded that you have positive terms only. So that wouldn't work. The P-series test, same thing, says you need to have all positive terms. Same thing for the direct comparison test, same thing for the limit comparison test. Um, there are only, like I said, just a few tests like the ratio test um, and the geometric series test which handle negative numbers like this. So anyway, here's what it says and then I'll, I'll explain it. It says if you have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, or this could be n plus 1, any, anything that alternates like this, times some function of n, we'll call it a sub n. That's going to converge as long as the terms other than the alternating part go to 0, and every later term is less than or equal to every previous term. Now there's a, a word you might hear in your class called monotonic. basically means mono is, is doing one thing. So an example of a, a a monotonic graph or a monotonic sequence would be like for instance 1 over uh, we'll do like 1 over n. Uh, 1 over n 1 is greater than a half or to say it another way the later term a half is less than 1 the earlier term um, and then it goes down from there then a third then a fourth then a fifth then a sixth so mono means it's just doing one thing it's decreasing forever uh, now if you had an, another series that went down and then back up and then down and then back up you couldn't use the alternating series test it has to be monotonically decreasing so let me explain what's going on here and then we'll try a couple examples Let's look at this uh, well-known popular example, uh, the sum of 1 over n. So you get 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, etc. Uh, we already know this is going to diverge uh, by the p-series. This is a very straightforward p-series problem. But I want to look, what, what would happen if I threw in a minus 1 to the n? So I not only let it have those same terms, but I made it alternate plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So this one, um, just the way I have the order set up, will start off with a negative, and then a positive, a half, and then minus a third, plus a fourth, minus a fifth, etc. So th think about this. Would, would it help or hurt our chances of converging by having these negatives in here every other term? Well, the answer is it would help the convergence because every other term is in some sense canceling a fair amount of the terms right right beside it. So instead of plus, 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 more, 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 every other term has some subtraction qualities which negate some of the, the positive terms. So now I'm not saying that it will converge, I'm just saying that it makes it more likely. Now, now in fact, this one will wind up converging. Um, and so here's here's the gist of, of what the alternating series test says. It says if you have alternate, uh, alternating terms, the restrictions are much, much more lax. If you think back to the nth term test, one of the basic criteria, it didn't even guarantee that it would converge, but it says unless this happens, it doesn't have a prayer of converging, the terms have to at least go to zero. And then there was the issue of how fast and whatnot. Well, that's pretty much the only criteria the, really the main criteria for the alternating series test. It says if you're alternating, the, the restrictions are as lax as they can almost possibly be. Um, as long as these terms go to zero, because they're changing sign plus minus plus minus, uh, there's a very high likelihood that it'll converge. Now, if it goes to zero monotonically, then it will definitely converge. You've satisfied the alternating series test. So you just have to check these two things, and then you can... Uh, say that a particular series converges. So looking at uh, just this easy example first, um, if this is our a sub n, then we just have to show two things. Uh, actually, 
correction. That whole thing is not a sub n. Just the 1 over n. Because remember, when you're choosing your a sub n, uh, you can leave out the alternating guy. <clears throat> so we have to show two things. One is the later term less than or equal to the previous term. So a sub n plus 1 would be, you take out the n, you replace it with n plus 1, and then a sub n would of course be 1 over n. This is a very simple inequality. Of course it's true. When you have a larger denominator, of course it's going to make the fraction smaller. And then second of all, uh, what's the limit as n goes to infinity for 1 over n? Well, obviously it's 0. So those uh, two criteria, I guess I did them a little backwards. This is what I called 1. This is what I called number 2. But they're both true. And so this converges by the um, alternating series test. Okay. Now, <clears throat> showing that the later terms are smaller than your earlier terms it sometimes can be more difficult than, than you might anticipate. Uh, if you have a very easy series like this, you can, you can do it algebraically. So, matter of fact, I, I think I'm just going to skip this part. Um, because doing it algebraically, you're just trying to set up an inequality to show that the later term is less than the earlier term. But you can imagine, if you had a really big expression, uh, it would be very difficult to show if that was less than or greater than or whatever uh, than, than another particular term. But what I'm mostly interested in showing you is a calculus way of doing this. If a sub n equals 1 over n, you want to show that's monotonically decreasing, temporarily change this to a continuous function of x. So instead of 1 over n, you make it 1 over x. Now, in, in Calc 1, what does it mean for a function to be decreasing? Well, it means that its slopes are positive. So check this out. If you can take the derivative of f, and in this case you get negative 1 over x squared by uh, rewriting this as the power rule, x to the minus 1, um, you get this. And, and notice, that's always um, less than 0 because you have a negative divided by a positive, which will always give you a, a negative here. So as long as this function's derivative is negative, that means the original function is decreasing, which implies the sequence is decreasing. So it's a nice little little trick switching that over to a continuous function and, uh, and using derivatives there. Okay. Now this actually leads to a, another discussion. I'll, I'll try to go through this very quickly. Um, there's actually two different types of convergence that leads from this discussion here. Certain series can converge absolutely or conditionally based off of um, this one statement here. Let's read it. A series converges absolutely if the regular series converges and if you take the absolute value of the terms I just notice I have a typo here. Sorry about that. This should be converges. Uh, my fault. Uh, this should be converges right here. Um, now what does this mean? Well check out the difference between the original and the one with the absolute values. They're the exact same series except this guy would have no negative terms. Now I know that the a sub n's aren't negative. The, the changing in, of sign is happening here. So in effect, what's happening with these absolute values is you're just getting rid of these terms. You're getting rid of the help. Do you remember I was talking about how if you had the change in sign, it would help it converge? So if it can converge without the assistance of alternating positive and negative, we say that it converges absolutely. It converges regardless of whether it has assistance or not. Now, on the other hand, if uh, your series converges, but if you took away the alternating terms, if you took away the changes in sign, if it would diverge under those con conditions, then we say it converges conditionally. In other words, it converges on the condition that you've got that, that negative 1 to the n in there. So let's, let's look back at this example we've already finished, this one right here. Um, if you had negative 1 to the n over n, okay, that converges. But if you took the absolute value of these terms, well, you'd still have over n, that would stay the same, but the minus 1 to the n would turn to a 1, and that diverges. So if it originally converges, but when you put absolute value bars around it, it now diverges, we say it converges this series converges conditionally. It needs that help. It needs that assistance. Now compare that to an example 
like um, I'll just squeeze this right in here. I'll switch colors. Um, the sum of negative one to the n over n cubed. Okay, think about that. Would that converge conditionally? Does it need the help? Does it need the alternating terms? Or does it converge absolutely to where even if you took away this alternating guy, he would still converge? Uh, answer, converges absolutely. Because even if you took the absolute value of these terms and got the sum of 1 over n cubed, that still converges. All right, let's finish up with one last quick example. Um, here we have the sum negative 1 to the n plus 1 e to the negative n squared. All right, uh, so I'm going to treat this, everything other than the alternating part, as a sub n. I threw in an n plus 1 just to illustrate the fact that it doesn't matter which one you have. Um, to kind of see that, if you just factored out one term of negative 1 and stuck it on the outside, pulled it out of the series, then it's back to negative 1 to the n, and, you know, we're fine. So let, let's see if it's decreasing first. See if it's decreasing. I'll write this as f of x equals e to the negative x squared. His derivative would be negative 2x e to the negative x squared, which would be negative 2x over e to the x squared. Okay. Um, that is always negative, because you have negative 2, and all of our x's, like our n's, are going to be greater than 1, 1 to infinity. So you have a negative times a positive over a positive. So this would be a, a negative quantity in total. Um, so that'll be uh, less than zero, which shows that this term here is decreasing. I'll just put a check mark right there. Um, and we have to just show one more simple thing. What's the limit as n goes to zero for e to the negative n squared? In other words, one over e to the n squared, I think that's pretty obvious. It's going to zero. You have a fixed constant numerator over a denominator that's growing insanely fast, and that should be an infinity symbol there. Sorry about that. Um, it's growing and growing and growing, so the whole fraction goes to zero, obviously. So this converges okay, the alternating series test. And pardon my abbreviation there.